I have the pleasure of being, uh, I guess, the only in institutional investor in FunPlus, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> you may not have heard of the company, but uh, FunPlus is, uh, on a global basis, uh, the sixth largest uh, provider of games on the Facebook platform. Uh, and the dominant provider of games on the Facebook platform in Southern Europe and the M Middle East. When we funded them, I guess, 20 months ago, uh, they were just about break even. They have never spent the money they raised from us and they've been accumulating cash at a ferocious rate. Um, and a couple of months ago, they launched a, uh, a mobile version uh, and what do you have? You have a million DAUs now on mobile? Yeah, over, over one million DAU right now. So <clears throat> we thought that this would be good to have a conversation because um, <clears throat> there have been very few Chinese technology companies uh, that have managed to build a presence outside of China. Um, and Andy, how much of your revenues comes from China? <clears throat> uh, right now, uh, zero percent. Zero? Yeah. Yeah. Big fat zero, like really zero? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So everything is outside of China. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, this is one of the rare companies. Uh, and when we looked at it, we had always said we weren't going to fund companies in China developing for the U.S. market. And then Andy came to us and said, no, we're not doing for the U.S. market. We're doing for the rest of the world, right? So t tell me a little bit about, you know, why, you know, perhaps you tell the audience, why did you pick Europe? Why Middle East? Why Europe? Um, yeah, by uh, 2010, so uh, when I went back to uh, doing a company in China, uh, Zynga is doing quite well in the US. So, um, so basically, I'm trying to find a market which um, it's, um, has value in the next two or three years, right? So, um, so we're debating that time. So it's looking at the volume market and the value market. So we figure out uh, European might be the next growth market, mm. and also it's a value market. So that's why actually we, um, when we started the company, so we targeted to do the European market. So uh, we also wanted to do uh, international company. Uh, and then, I mean, as we're doing uh, in European, we found out um, all gains actually is um, doing extremely good in uh, Turkey and uh, Middle East. Uh, Why we are making success in U European at the same time. Um, then we also support the Middle East. So mm -hmm. that's like a, a bonus. Right. Uh, because we're not talking to do uh, Middle East be before at that time. But we launched a game in Turkey as Turkey is part of the European, right? And then we see the growth. Yeah, that's a story. So. So, so I'm sure you've heard of the problems that Zynga, you no, know, the, the little problems that Zynga has had. Tell me, what have you done that's different that you know allowed you to continue, you know, expanding and growing and doing well? You know, it's not. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I mean, when we are looking for the people, uh, people also also ask this question. You also hired some people from Zynga, right? Yeah, yeah. They yeah. they also ask this question. Say why I need to join Farmplus, right? Um, so I think <clears throat> that's really simple reasons. There's three, three reasons, basically. Uh, the first one is uh, I love games by myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, we basically, we build a company with a bunch of people who love games. Uh, so a lot of like, uh, leaders mm -hmm. and also um, producers, they love games. So we actually try to always meet with people, convince them um, to combine the copy with the career, right? Uh -huh. So that's quite a unique. Uh, the second one is um, we actually, I mean, um, we, we are building a company which um, looking for the innovation always. So when people look at the gains, they say, what's the innovation in gains, right? Uh, actually, innovation matters in gaming. Um, that's few few sections. For them, technology matters. Like uh, Formula 2 is a 3D technology which bring the value to the users. Um, and also, um, the operation also matters. If you look at some games right now, um, in, within the game, they have a chat system which they allow like a 16 language translated. So for example, 
I'm talking with a player, so I say Chinese, so you are from French, and then you actually will see French. When really? I say, Simultaneous translation? Yes. So it's wow. like, uh, it also has innovation. I mean, they leverage the Google system and also uh -huh. do the data mining by themselves. Uh -huh. So GAINS has the innovation. So we focus on that in the innovation and also multiple category of the GAINS. So I think that's Zynga not doing at the beginning. Uh -huh. Even Zynga is really big. They, um, they actually do in, uh, a lot of uh, casual GAINS um, and also most <coughs> of the company is based on the same category. Uh, but right now Zynga doing a lot of category. Uh, I, I think it's a little bit late as they are too big to figure out the innovation. Uh, so, I mean, the third one is, um, since we studied in uh, European, so we actually do the gain local localization and the, um, the customer operation really well. So we treat the gain as a community, community, community support. So at the beginning, we actually build the communities for French uh, mm -hmm. specifically. So we do more gains for French community. So we maintain a commu community. More people come back to um, talk with us, give us feedback, and also we keep improving the game. Mm -hmm. And right now, the innovation is we try to build a community within the game. So it means um, in the game, you're not just play the game, have fun, build the cities. You're also talking with people. You are cooperating with people. Um, before, a lot of games do the publishment, say, if you need social games, you need to set a clock, you need to come back in four hours, eight hours, then you, if you're not, then you will get published, mm -hmm. right? Punished. And then for all game right now, the next, next generation of the games, like, you actually check in the game, you get a notification, you come in to help your team, mm -hmm. uh, not just on no friends, but the people, group of people, for a tribe, for a team, so you always check in to help people, people. Mm. and you get a bonus. If you are not checking, you're not losing every, anything. So it's a uh, help But you lose the bonus. Um, you can say that if you um, feel that the bonus, but that, that the bonus doesn't belong to you at, at yeah, the first, okay. right? So, so that's. Yeah. So let me ask a question here. Andy says, you know, doing something you love and making a career of it. How many of you play video games? Like, how many of you don't play video games? Wow, you got the wrong, this is an odd audience. <laughs> I thought it's like supposed to be 95% of the, how many of you here have not played Candy Crush? Huh? Yeah, I think uh, in China's report, oh, you, you will see more people playing games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 no worries. <laughs> Yeah, pretty confident. Like, yeah. not of people will um, use cell phone to yeah. play games. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How, many, how many of you have not watched a movie? You know, the gaming business is bigger than the movie business. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. Okay. So, that, tell me a little bit about this. Well, why do you think that the you all have been successful? You know, um, uh, with content outside of China, right? developed in China but for a global audience. And most other companies in China have not been able to do that. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> actually that's because um, the, diff the company we are building, uh, it's a little bit different. So since the beginning, so we want to do the European market. So uh, we actually, when we built the first office in Beijing, um, we want to build a really international office. So by now we have almost 200 people in Beijing. Um, more than 50 of them are from European and the US. So we actually, from the beginning, we are recruiting people from overseas. Um, I mean, you didn't see that kind of high percentage of employees uh, in Beijing, even in Google office, yeah. Uh, so later on, when we all gains takes off, then when company grows, so we build a multiple office, right? We build in, we build an office in Vancouver, and then uh, recently we build an office in San Francisco. So the strategy is we actually recruiting from different places because uh, China is has really, really great uh, talents, 
but they're also missing in some part. So we are actually recruiting people from uh, France, Vancouver, from San Francisco, which they do some ro rotation. So they actually go to China sometimes for six months, three months. They also help, him, help people to grow. So that's actually uh, the system we build up. So um, I, I know a lot of gaming company, uh, they also have red presence in China, but they're pretty much doing R&D in China, mm -hmm. right? So the difference from Fun Plus is uh, each office is equally important, and also they are not operating separately. So mm -hmm. they are not doing gains by themselves. Yeah. So they are cooperate globally to doing gains. So even like, for example, in San Francisco office, we have around 10 people right now, um, really, really cool people, and they are not working on the same game. They have artists, they have game designer, they also have technology people, and uh, they work in different teams, just with different people in different office. So that's the, uh, that's the model we are building. Uh, so how do you persuade the people to move to China, to Beijing, given all the you know, stories of the air pollution and you know, and Hugo is going there, so he'll be, he'll see that firsthand for himself. I think, um, I think that's like the pros and cons, right? When we can uh, convince people, weather is definitely is a, is a factor, right? Yeah. When I talked with people mm -hmm. yesterday, uh, so he says, uh, Andy, why don't go to Germany, right? Because yeah. Germany has King.com, has, yeah. has all these companies, uh, they have good weather. So, um, Germany has good weather? <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> comparing to Beijing. Oh, okay, better yes. than Beijing. Okay, yes. fair enough. It's a matter of comparison. Yeah, so I also yeah. met some yeah. problems. When yeah. I have classmates in Facebook, he yeah. earned a lot of money in Facebook. He want to help me, right? Yeah. And then uh, his wife says no. Yeah. And then um, he didn't come because yeah. he has family. So I think it's, it's a pros and cons. Right now, I've, I hope the weather will improve. Uh -huh. uh, but at the same time, we are expanding more in Vancouver and the Bay Area. When I convince people to come there, um, actually, I mean, one reason is because when I talk with the people, they can feel I know gains, mm. we have passion in gains, so they want to work with like startups who love gains, mm. the CEO especially. Mm. Uh, the second one is, um, we are not forcing people to stay in one particular office. So basically, if you're the leader, so you need to do some rotation. It's usually, usually three or six months. Mm -hmm. So then you can choose to work in Vancouver or San Francisco. So it's, I mean, it's not a long term. They need to live there for three mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. But still, I see some people, they really want to go mm -hmm. China because mm -hmm. people, sometimes they feel the entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and also, lots of stuff going on in China. They want to stay in Beijing more. They want to learn. Um, it doesn't mean they don't care whether. It might be there's some reason it's more important than weather. So, yeah. so do you intend to enter the US market? Yes, we, um, we actually do in US um, right now. Um, especially in the next one, two years, yeah. we have a bunch of really in a very, very product coming out. Uh, the main focus will be US. Uh -huh. We want to be top three players in US in the next one, two years. Top three, you're going to do a million dollars a day? Number three is a million dollars a day. I mean, Candy Crush Saga, one game did more than one million. Yeah, so you're day. going to do a million dollars a day. Oh, wow. Okay. We, we just need to do one game, right? Uh, that'd be nice, yes. yes. That would return, that would be good for my fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the hope, the dream, yeah. right? So because you look at Fun Plus, mm -hmm. it's, we, we're really uh, diverse yeah. as well. Um, when I'm talking with some people, they even don't believe like a startup can do that, right? They just feel uh, in China, Tencent can do that. But if you look at Fun Plus, in the management people, we have four people, the founders. Um, we have one from US, right? Yeah. And, he, he used to be leading yeah. Pogo and uh, uh, like Playfish office, yeah. US yeah. office. He's leading mobile yeah. for Kickside. Yeah. Uh, they, I mean, we also have technology people. He used to be chief architecture in Flickr. Yeah. And they all joined uh, yeah. the small startup. They are chasing their dreams. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we have dreams, want to yeah. 
make it done mm -hmm. with great people. Yes. So I asked one last question, and we let the audience ask a couple of questions if they have any. Um, so you say you want to be top three gaming companies, uh, you know, global, right? Yeah. Um, so you think that mobile gaming, and you have mainly mobile, fa Facebook rapidly becoming mobile, right? What do you think of mobile versus consoles versus Facebook? You think Facebook is going anywhere? Facebook is, you know? Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, um, because a lot of people here, they, they um, pay attention to the China market, right? Yeah. So uh, we are doing... Um, oh, of course, you can't do Facebook in China. Yeah, okay, so right. in China, it's a different case. Tencent, yeah. So I think like next session, yeah. Xiaomi and all these companies, yeah. Tencent, they are talking about yeah. this. Uh, so I was talking about something like uh, overseas, right? Yeah. And maybe you should talk to Hugo about Xiaomi. <laughs> I feel like in yeah. outside of China, right? Yeah. Um, Social and mobile games, because social games is a relative small section. Uh -huh. uh, it's a category in Facebook, right? Facebook has another categories. They have e-commerce, they mm -hmm. have games. Mm -hmm. um, but mobile is much bigger, because Facebook is a part of the mobile, game, mobile games even, right? So, um, so I've, I feel mobile definitely has more chance, in more big space. In social games, uh, in PC dedicatedly, I feel um, it's hard to get into right now because they have a really high uh, CPI mm. uh, for the users, and also the users is not growing in PC too much. For those of you who are not familiar, CPI is cost per install. Yeah, so basically, we, <clears throat> we already have big traffic in Facebook. We have around 5 million daily active users in Facebook. Um, so uh, we're relative a big player in Facebook, so we can leverage this social platform mm -hmm. to uh, actually get people to engage to play games across mobile and uh, uh, PC. So I think that's a good strategy. Uh, so even right now, I see Facebook uh, mobile users is growing a lot, right? It's almost like one one billion users, mobile users. So. Um, None of games, even even like new mobile company, uh, they are not doing release games in PC, but they also use Facebook as a social graph, basically connect friends and get them to play. Uh, like uh, Kindalcon, they have uh, Candy Crush Saga. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of people re received their request from friends, like mm -hmm. I need a ticket. Mm -hmm. So that actually helps the mobile games uh, to be more engaged. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have some numbers. It's like people who connected to the Facebook connector will be at least the two times, um, like two times of the uh, like uh, revenue ARPU mm -hmm. than the people who didn't. Who did connect, right? Yeah. Okay. So 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 that's actually some some information. Mm -hmm. So if you have both, that's great. If you you, you only do mobile, that's also not bad because you can use the social graph. So, yeah. so what's the best thing you could have coming out this time here at Stanford for you? Since you came all the way from China, I, I know you've got other meetings, but you know, since you spend a day and afternoon here. I mean, um, there's a lot of learning. Uh -huh. I, um, I talk with a lot of people, a uh, lot of um, like, people in the tech space. Uh -huh. uh, and also I uh, listen to other sessions, mm -hmm. uh, another stuff going on between China and the, Mo and the US. Um, I think um, the definitely what I feel is uh, the entre entrepreneurship um, actually is growing so rapidly in China. So it definitely provide really big a chance for people in China and also in Stanford in US, right? We can see like people come to China, they mm -hmm. develop their career, and also like Tencent, they go to US, like FunPlus want to be a global company. So that's not of chance to, for the people who want to be leaders in the tech, tech section for the entrepreneurs, and also not of uh, chance for the entrepreneurs, um, like for the investors, if they know the space mm -hmm. really well, if they know the China really well, mm -hmm. they know the mobile market, mobile gains uh -huh. really well. Yeah, I think that's that's 
Yeah, that's the what I get the most. Yeah. But you worked here in the valley before, right? What What do you see as the difference uh, between working here in the valley and working in China? Yeah, I mean, I um, other than the blue air, the sunshine, you know, clean air, you know, less traffic, better weather. Yes, I, I worked in Wally for five years. Um, I do miss the weather. Yeah. So, um, but comparing to Wally and China, uh, for the entrepreneurship, I feel it's a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So for, for the entrepreneurship, I feel um, China is more, it's, China is growing in this section. So I feel Wally is more mature. So in Wally, like when you start a company, it's easy. So you, you get all the help. So if you get the traffic and then investor will come to you, right? In mm -hmm. Palo Alto, you can talk with tons of investors. And then um, for the business and for distribution, you need Apple, you need Google, and you can do all this mm -hmm. business stuff, right? Uh, in China, definitely uh, this part is missing because it's not that mature from different perspective, like a legal per perspective, uh, investor and also a business perspective. But it does provide a unique opportunity for the people who have the international vision, right? Mm -hmm. Because in China, people, they don't have this. So if you have that, then it helps because you help people and also you can lead the trend. Uh, you can grow a company really rapidly. Uh, you can grow the leadership. So that's, that's like a pros and a cons. So basically, you need the people who has the vision uh, to lead the company. I think a lot of uh, leaders in China, like uh, in Tencent, in different companies, they have a lot of uh, visionary people who lead in the trend, right? Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, uh, and also China, the economy is growing so fast, as you guys know. Um, and also, the tech section is, it's, it's growing more faster because China is transition from an uh, old business model into yeah. new business model. Before, it's based mainly on manufacturing and uh, real estate, right? Yeah. Right yeah. now, uh, the high-tech section is growing so fast. Still small. Uh, it's, um, they're estimating to take like 7 to 8% of the GDP in, in next two years. But we are we are definitely looking forward to see 10 percent or 15 percent in the near future because uh, technology and the innovation just help the people and also help the society uh, make the the whole economy more healthy. I think that's the right direction. Yeah. World.